best year of my life? That's an interesting question. Hi, I'm Alex Honnold, and these are my best and worst. I mean, I guess the best part was hanging out with my friends for two years because everyone on the film crew was a good personal friend of mine. And so, you know, it was kind of nice having that, that built-in climbing community with me. The whole point was to climb the cap and having the film crew with me for two years helped me work on that goal. Uh, the worst part about having a film crew with me for two years, I mean, it's the answer is sort of in the question right there. The worst part is just having a film crew following you around for two years. Uh, you know, you always feel like a weirdo and there's a guy with a big boom mic standing behind you with like a microphone dipping in. You know, I went to the DMV with a camera crew behind me and a boom mic and I was like, this is so embarrassing. Everyone's staring and you're just like, oh man. Definitely seeing El Cap on the wall, just the, the cinematography, the beauty of it, how well it documents the, the sheer grandeur of Yosemite. I mean, when I watch Free Solo, I'm still just totally inspired by, by the beauty of it. I'm like, oh, what a place. The worst part is just seeing myself talking on screen for 90 minutes. You know, there are a lot of things in the film where I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Some of the things that I say to my then girlfriend, my now wife, you know, I'm like, eee, maybe I could have been a little more tactful on some of that. Basically, any kind of question that makes me think about the world in a way that I haven't before, like something I haven't been asked before, or something that makes me explore climbing in a new way. It's like, I just want questions that are thoughtful for me. The worst types of questions are the ones that I've gotten a million times that show sort of a misunderstanding of the sport or a misunderstanding of what I'm doing. You know, things like, have you ever felt fear? And you're like, well, that's a big question. You know, or, or a question like, uh, why do you freestyle? And you're like, oh man, like it's not even called freestyling. Like you don't even know the name of, of what I'm doing. Basically questions that show a total lack of, of uh, understanding of, of the context of what I do. But that said, I mean, I totally understand why people ask those, but you know, it gets tiring to answer. That's an interesting question. 2012 was actually a really big year for my personal climbing and big breakthrough, a bunch of climbing things. Um, 2017 when I free solo at El Cap was obviously a big year. But honestly, 2020 in some ways, has been, or sort of coming up into currently, which I guess includes 21, is, is one of the better years of my life too, getting married and um, I've been climbing really well and, and working on projects that are exciting to me. And then worst year of my life was probably 2003, I guess. I went to university for one year after high school and I always look back at that as kind of a wasted year because I wasn't really passionate about what I was studying. There was no real reason for me to be there. And so, I kind of see that as a lost year that I should have just spent going climbing. Really, anytime I stick a move that I don't expect to, like anytime I do something in climbing where I think I'm going to fall off, but then I actually manage to hold on anyway, it always feels so triumphant when you sort of exceed your own expectations. But my worst moment on a climb, there have been many, but uh, an easy one that comes to mind is uh, getting stuck in a storm in Patagonia near the summit of a very large granite spire called the uh, Sartore in a very long and sort of epic story short, we wound up retreating off the wrong side of the mountain range because of the storm and then having to hike all the way around the entire mountain range to get back to town. So it wound up being a 54 hour push total with uh, the last 20 hours of walking without food. So it was a pretty, pretty grim climbing experience. I would maybe have to say cliffhanger. Actually, I would say that the film Cliffhanger straddles the line between the best and the worst. It's completely over the top. It's like a caricature of climbing, but I still find it kind of joyous and kind of fun. Okay, now swing as hard as you can. Push. Actually, it might be tied with uh, the new version of Point Break for the least reali realistic depictions of climbing you know ever ever done in Hollywood. Best part about living in a house is just the comfort. I mean, having a kitchen, having a bathroom, having consistent power and Wi-Fi. You know, I mean, it is definitely more comfortable to be in a house, which is why almost everybody does it when they're able. <laughs> the worst part about living in a house is definitely the greater overhead, like doing stuff, you know, like getting the mail. Like yesterday I spent 20 minutes like opening stuff and looking at bills and I'm just kind of like, oh, the HOA left a notice about something in the yard. And you're like, who cares about the HOA? Like who cares about the yard? You know, it's like, I just want to go climbing all the time. Like I don't care about my yard. So there's like a crazy motorcycle outside the house. And that's the worst thing about living in the house. You have like all kinds of weird noises and things. It's a cool moment for climbing and it's, and it's nice to see that kind of talent on display. That said, I mean, I guess the worst thing about climbing being in the Olympics this summer is probably just the fact that it's showcasing such a 
particular slice of climbing. When we talk about climbing, it really means, I mean, it has roots in mountaineering and classical alpinism and includes things like ice climbing and all these different aspects of climbing, which honestly is a big part of why we started the podcast, why we started Climbing Gold, to make sure that while the public is focused on this one aspect of climbing, we remember where it came from and what the rest of climbing is all about. Talking to so many of my childhood heroes, basically, you know, people whose posters were up in my climbing gym when I was a kid, uh, people whose story, you know, helped inspire and, and shape the direction that my climbing has taken. So being able to just talk to so many incredible climbers and, and hear their stories has been, has been a true best. The worst thing about recording a podcast about climbing has probably just been sitting in my downstairs gear closet. <laughs>